Well, welcome to today's episode of Content Creation Made Easy. Today, I'm talking about a topic that you might be wondering, like, why the hell is she talking this on con- talking about this on Content Creation Made Easy? But today, I'm talking about networking, and I'm speaking to a networking expert. So, why am I talking about networking and having to, on a podcast having to do with marketing and content? You're going to find out. I promise. It all converges. But today, let me introduce my guest. I have Siobhan Fitzpatrick. Well, let me just say that again because I loved that. Siobhan Fitzpatrick, who we are talking today to somebody who's been in the marketplace for 35 plus years. She has lived in three countries and she is all about knowing that a strong network can work magic for your career, your business, and yes, your social life. Um, We're going to be talking about how networking can happen anywhere and anytime, but how much better it works for you when you have a strategy. And Siobhan has learned firsthand how to build and sustain a network of contacts ranging across the world. So we're talking to somebody who's been doing this for a long time and who knows a lot about it. I know Siobhan personally, and I know her passion and her expertise will come through. And so Siobhan, I'm so excited to be here with you. Thank you so much. Oh, Jen, thank you very much for inviting me. And I'm excited to be here and hopefully <laughs> share some nuggets that your listeners can take away and put into action. I have no doubt because let's just jump right in. I, I think people will learn about you and your experience as we go. Um, but I really want to jump in with talking about the power of networking because I feel like I've heard from many women entrepreneurs specifically that networking can feel kind of yucky or aggressive, or it's like, especially if they're introverted, networking feels like a hard pill to swallow. So I'm just wondering if you could talk a little bit about the power of networking. Absolutely. So, I mean, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're actually a career grower, um, networking is key. Bottom line, we can educate ourselves in the skills and the techniques to do our job, whatever that job may be. But really, it's people buy into people they know and they trust and they respect. And we hear that all the time. So when you are going for that for that job, if, if it comes down to it and your CV's on the table, um, it's really the person that might say, oh, do you know what? I know this person. I've seen papers they've written or I have, I have seen them on LinkedIn. I've seen the content they deliver and it's really uh, compelling. And I believe their personality shines through and they can really reach our audience versus, mm-hmm. oh, this is somebody who's got all the skills. I don't know them so well. Mm-hmm. So you're you really are, it's like another form of marketing and Mm -hmm. it ties in really well with everything we do in our business. So um, the power of networking can come through in the digital sense, it can come through in the the face-to-face meetings and when you connect with individuals and you make an impact, and I don't mean all showbiz and jazz hands, I mean you, you make that really strong connection with an individual, that will last with them. And then the importance is keeping that connection going, following up, making sure that you are nurturing your network. Uh, And yes, it does take time. And yes, it does take effort. And there is um, the golden rule is to be consistent in your efforts. But the power can be huge. You can land clients, you can land jobs, you can meet somebody that might put you in connection with another new piece of business or may actually connect you with somebody who's beneficial to your client. There's just so much. I mean, I could go on and on and on. The point is, if we don't think about it as networking, because I think that word is a bit like poaching is to others. It's, it's, it kind of gives them that, oh, as you, you use the phrase very nicely, it's yucky. You know, mm-hmm. they, it makes the hairs in the back of their neck stand up. And there's some that are natural at it and they have this ability to go into conversations and into environments and network very naturally. And then you've got the others who it takes all of their might to walk over the threshold. So you talked about introverts and, and you could, you can see them. They're the ones on the phone that are at the side of the room that are not engaging and, and they're willing their phone to ring so that they have an excuse to leave or they're distracting themselves or they really have to push themselves to move out. 
Uh, and I'll touch on this later on. I think what I want to um, maybe bring into this question you asked first about the power is simplifying it maybe a little bit. Simplifying sim your, when you say simplifying, what do you mean? Breaking it down. Okay. So the power of networking is a big, awesome statement. Okay. Right? Yeah. So how do we break it down into, how can I be, or how can I gain from the power of networking? So if we break it down into three areas, and that is your personal brand. Okay. So that's what people are saying about you when you're not in the room. Mm. Are you a value contributor? So what value do you bring to your audience, to your listeners, to your clients, to your connections? And then the last is the performance piece. Mm. How are you performing? What are you doing to actively network? Okay. Are you depositing into that wonderful network bank? And networking is very much like our bank, our savings bank, that we must continuously and consistently put deposits in before we can ever ask to withdraw anything. So can we talk, do you want to go into each one of those three things, because I think there's probably a lot to unpack for both, for all of it, personal brand, the contribution, the, that's like the, um, that's like the deposits, right? The value that you yeah. bring. And then yeah. the, uh, the actions that you take or the performance piece. Yeah. So do people um, get confused by the personal brand piece? Yeah, they can do. So a lot of people will automatically think personal brand is how we look, mm -hmm. um, how we show up, what our logos like, um, our brand colors, what, our brand <laughs> colors. Yeah. The, don't get it started because the branding and marketing people will be all over me. Um, <laughs> it's how, yes, personal brand is how people think about you. Mm. So we talk about the millennials or the young people now who are on social media and they're not really thinking ahead and understandably so they're living their life but they're not thinking ahead of how it will impact them in the future i'm very glad that i grew up in a time when i was younger when we didn't have to worry about what social media had because it wasn't around so how are we showing up what would our friends describe us or how would our friends describe us how would our colleagues or our clients describe us what do people say about us when we're not there? That is our personal brand. Mm -hmm. And I'll add something in, in here, and that is a, a, a saying that I like, and that is, it's not who you know, it's not who knows you, it's who knows what you know. What, and can you explain that? That's a Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, you, you know, let's think, let's look at you. You are the, the content queen. You are the content specialist, creator, the, the, the person that can get us writing when we didn't think we could or how to unpack our, our content and our knowledge. And so I know this because I've worked with you. I know this because I'm, I network with you. I know a lot about you because I have conversations with you and you tell me something new every, every time. And I inquire, I'm curious, I'm inquisitive. But if I show up in a space um, and I'm thinking specifically about, let's say, face to face networking, it can happen on, on, on online, too. But you get those people who network. They don't connect. So they they're the ones that go, oh, I'm this and I'm, a, you know, I'm an accountant. I'm, I'm not cursing all accountants. Please forgive me. I'm just taking the first one that comes to my head. A uh, I'm an accountant and I can do your books. I can do your VAT returns. I can do your tax. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, here's my business card. Give me a call. Okay. Well, what I know about that person is they're an accountant. They're pushy. They didn't ask one question about me. They didn't inquire about what I did. They didn't even know if I needed an accountant. Um, and also they, they didn't really tell me anything but their label. Yeah. So what you want to do is ensure that you're imparting information and, um, you know, you talk about this uh, to your to your clients. It's what problem are you solving? It's not what you, it's not about the widgets we sell or the products or the services we offer. It's about um, how we help people. We're educating people on what we do, but also you want to demonstrate where you're adding value. You know, people will say, oh, 
gosh, I contacted Jen and she connected me with somebody else that I needed. Yeah. That's very helpful. So you'll be known as, you know, the person who supports, who helps. That also speaks to the value, right? Like the value that you bring. Yeah. Yeah. The value you bring. What do you, yeah. Create value before you extract it. Tell, you know, where you can, even you're not going to make stuff up, but if this is where networking also gets me so excited, (laughs) I like to think that I have an arsenal of connections, not for me because I can't use everybody's services. I can't utilize their intelligence or their intellect or their experience, but I may know somebody that has. So it's really important not to network just for yourself, but for your clients and for your connections. I love that. You talk about really being in service. That's um, There's two big things that you touched on here that I, I think my audience would really appreciate. In it, we're talking about, first of all, your messaging. Your personal brand is more than just what you look like. It's, it's also like the messaging that you bring. Do you have a clarity of message? And it goes, be, like, I used to be an English teacher and I would tell people, what do you do for a living? I'm an English teacher. That kind of was all I had to do, but that doesn't really suffice on the online space. If you're trying to develop a relationship with somebody, right. like what kind of English teacher are you? How do you approach the literature that you teach? How do you approach it? Like, I never had to talk about any of that, but in the online space, I have to talk, like I'm a content creation specialist doesn't tell anybody about how I work with them or the kind of results that they could get or the problems that we solve. And that's exactly what you're talking about. So your content and your messaging and the way you do it really applies tons in developing a relational versus a transactional experience when you're networking. Absolutely. I mean, we have a duty of care for the people who will soon be our clients. Mm -hmm. And that is often, they don't know what they need to know just yet. Yeah. But when they read those wonderful content pieces that that people have written or the value they bring in their space, and it's not selling, it's not saying I do this, 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 this. It is talking to them, it's having a conversation with them through the, the medium of content and content delivery. Yeah. So, so that when you get into the uh when you get into the it's like they really are married so well together because once you have your messaging and you've got the content that you can send people to, when you get into that face-to-face or online networking or connecting relationship, uh, it's ready to go almost is what you're saying. Exactly. They feel like they know you. They've had an insight into you because you've shared, you're not sharing your soul. You are sharing your experience. You're sharing your knowledge. We all come to this table with so much experience and maybe, you know, uh, the feeling that the the reason you've got into the, the world you're in maybe is because you were once upon a time in their shoes. Yeah. So they want to hear that. They want to hear that, the, the, um, that you identify with their pain, that you identify with their challenges or with their, with their experiences. And that starts to connect them to you. So the relationship starts there. And then you might connect, you know, let's use the biggest networking platform out there, which is LinkedIn. You know, people request connects. And my recommendation, I had to learn this too, by the way, um, connect with everybody. There shouldn't be a reason why you don't connect. Now, if they sell, yeah, if they sell at you immediately, cut them off because that's not what you're about. But remember we're all if you're truly out there to help you would also kind of follow up with them and saying thank you for connecting how can I help you how can I support you or was there anything I've, I've written that has um that you've identified with I like that question that make that puts it back on them to then re-engage the conversation yeah yeah I mean I've had people request to follow because they say I like what you're putting out there. I really, I really enjoy reading your articles and they'll come up on my feed when I'm connected to you. And I'm like, great, happy to support. Yeah. Yeah. Can we talk a little bit more about the second piece, which is the contribution piece? Mm -hmm. Uh, That's the bringing the value. That's the depositing into the bank when you are networking and developing these relationships. I feel like people fall into um, value equals, um, I have to show you how, or I have to, provide something um, transactional. And I would just love for you to dive into a little bit more about what are you thinking when you say contributing to a connection? 
let me bring it down to basics um, to our friends. You know, and a friend comes along and they say, I'm having a hard time. I'm really struggling at the moment. Um, and I just don't know where to go. And this is what's going on with me. And you turn around and you say, you know what? I've not experienced that myself, but I do know somebody who has. So would you mind if I connected you with them? Because I think they could give you value or intel, right? So all you're doing is contributing a connection that you've made. Yeah. You know, you are connecting this other person or it might be, oh, I've got access to information that will help you. I'm going to share that with you. So I often, I often remember if I read papers or I read articles or um, something springs up on my inbox and I'll think of a client and I'll say, oh, I'll pass it on. I'll send it on going, this made me think of you. Nice. Right. Yeah. And that but means I love that it. you are, they are on, uh, in your mind. And that, that means a lot to people. It's the, it's the thoughtfulness factor yeah. really that we're talking about here. And that I think is something that maybe we're all not great at, but we could certainly hone those skills a little bit more. Yeah. And um, also the value that, you know, that uh, I, I have a lot to, to a long way to go. And, and Jen, you've been very instrumental in helping me. Um, it is, it's no good our information that's up here. That's value. Your intel and your intellect and your knowledge about your, your, your service or your product. And um, if it's not out there, then it's not going to go anywhere. It's not valuable so anyone. to anybody, right? Uh, the other thing that we haven't talked about, but is deeper and unsaid in what you're talking about here, uh, either helping them or sharing uh, or seeing their problem and, and providing them with a contact, the thoughtfulness factor, all of that just really goes to this very basic human need of other people needing to be seen and heard. And that's what I'm hearing you talk about with the, you know, the, that, that connection piece, you're, you're helping somebody feel visible in the world. Yeah. Yes, you are. And also, what is it? Do you want to go fast, go alone? You want to go yes. um, farther, go together, farther you go together. And so much can be achieved when you get, when we're helped. I love that. Thank and you for reminding me of that. we also need to ask for help. Yeah. Right? <laughs> not my strength. <laughs> yeah, no, listen, I'm great at giving it, but yeah, not so good. Not so hot myself. Yeah. So the core elements are me. your personal brand, the contribution. And then the third piece you were talking about was the performance speech, which I understand to be like, what action are you taking? Can you unpack that a little bit for us? And definitely unpack that. So performance, so network, and, and this will go across the board for whatever activity you're going to do. If it's writing your content, it'll actually um, <laughs> show up for this. It's, um, I, the, you can network, but you've got to have a strategy. There's no point in, you know, if you throw enough at the wall, it'll stick, or some will fall, but you, you've got to actually have an idea of what you want to achieve from the networking, from your activity in networking and where you're going to find it and where you're going to go for it. So what groups are you engaged with or involved with? Uh, what conversations are you having and with whom? Who are you surrounding yourself by? And are you, this is most important, are you consistent in that? Mm -hmm. Showing up once in a blue moon and not really contributing and you are A, showing that your personal brand is unreliable, B, you're not contrib contributing, and C, uh, people won't remember you. Your performance is lackluster, to say the least. So be consistent in your engagement, be consistent in um, your activity, and check in. So like our business plans, like our performance in our, in our companies, we check in. Am I on, on track to where I need to be this quarter? What do I need to do or change or adjust? All of it has to be adjusted, but it's a performance. It is a it is an act of doing. It's it's taking action, mm -hmm. and um, that needs to be wrapped into your your marketing plan, into your um, yeah, def, into your business plan for sure. Yeah. So let's talk about for those people who find. I, I'm sure this makes a lot of sense to everybody listening, but not everybody finds marketing easy or natural 
Some people find marketing to be like, I don't have capacity for this or I don't have energy for this. So let's talk about what do we do for people who are struggling with the act of networking? Right. So talk to me. I'm a networking <laughs> coach. I can help you. Uh, but it would be definitely to talk to somebody who has empathy and understands and can hear. Uh, coaches are really good at that. Um, it's about finding where you excel. So for example, when I enter, I'm an extrovert. Mm -hmm. And when I enter space and I communicate with people and I get curious and ask loads of questions because that's who I am, I, I'm intrigued with people and their journeys, I get fed. My energy gets higher and higher and higher. An introvert walks into the same room and they speak to one person and they're just getting deflated and deflated. deflated. It is acknowledging your your way of how you network and work to your style. Do not try to be anybody else. Don't try to do anything else. Work to your style. So if you go to a networking event and you, you go, right, I'm going to arrive 15 minutes um, before the presentation starts, give me 15 minutes of networking time with people because that's all about I can do. Yeah. And then I'm going to sit and I'm going to listen to presentations. And then I'm going to stay for 15 minutes afterwards because that's all I know I can do. Now I'm putting it into time. It might be 15 minutes um, and speaking to two different people because that's all you can do because you know that it's it's not the, the space for you. Or it might be, I dread going into a space where I know nobody. Again, if it's an online event, reach out to the organizer and say, I struggle with this or I, I, I'm not you know, comfortable walking into a space I don't know. Can you help me? Or is there something you can do to support me? Everybody who's organizing a networking event would be happy to support you. Uh, and then if it's walking into a real life room, speak to the people on the desk that are handing the badges out. Can you identify the organizer for me? Can you identify somebody from this particular company if you know the companies that are there and introduce me to them? So really this is requiring you to know your strengths, play to them, give yourself permission to do that. Yeah. Um, and also advocate for your, for your needs, which yes, the people at the front desk are there and they know everybody. So use yeah. them, right. Have them. They've got so, their, now. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, there's, I, I should preface this because sometimes we can have staff that are hired to give out badges and they don't know much about it, but you can then say, who's the organizer? Can yeah. I meet them please? And that's where you get introduced. If you are an introvert, is looking for the other introverts a good strategy for you? No. Oh, interesting. No, that's that was a very direct no. I feel like I'm uh, I'm I'm um, cutting that right out. Um, it's not about finding another introvert, or nor is it finding an extrovert because that might be too much for them. It's about finding what will make sense to the person. So if that's to speak to somebody first that they know, then that might be the warm up piece. Okay. And then challenge yourself, say, okay, to that person. Okay. So happy that I'm meeting you first and that we're connecting first, but I have a goal to do. And that is to meet other people that I don't yet know. Can I ask you to introduce me to somebody else that I don't know? Or can you come with me to the first intro and maybe just leave me to my own devices then when I'm introduced? I mean, I, that sounds like handholding, but whatever, whatever it takes, that's with, what you should do. You make a really compelling case for why networking is important and it might be a lot of work for you to learn how to do it in a way that feels yeah. good to you. So I want, these two things can exist at the same time. It's important and you might not be comfortable with it or good at it yet. And those are things I think we need to hold to us if we haven't uh, put our time and energy into making this a priority in our business. Yeah. Um, and also remember that it, through COVID, when we had to go online, everybody was online. And yeah. um, this actually was great for the introverts because they found themselves in their own space, yeah. confronting, and they could choose if they 
muted or maybe turned off the screen. Not that I recommend that because I don't, I think that might be a little bit stepping out of the, um, out of the space too much. Um, but what it does is you don't have a hundred voices at you because Zoom requires or online networking requires one person to speak before the other replies. And that's easier to take in for an yeah. introvert. One of, I have a lot of introverted clients because I'm so extroverted and I've learned over the course of the years, I'm married to an introvert. All of my closest friends are introverts. What they like about being near an extrovert is I can do the heavy lifting for them where yes. they're, so they don't get exhausted by it. So yes. I do tend to work with a lot of introverts. And one of the things I ask them to do when they're going to an event that they know will deplete them, like you talked about before, know yourself. Um, at the end how can you carve in time to put the oxygen mask on? So does that mean you need to drive around for a half an hour before you go home? Or maybe tomorrow you carve in some time to just go for a walk by yourself so you can recharge again. But I do think that even when you are carving in time to do networking and you understand all the strategies that you make work for you, there's usually an extra step to follow up with other people, but you kind of also have to follow up with yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a really good point to raise. Um, it is it is the reflection time. It is the decamping time. Um, and look, I, I could say take time out and chill, listen to music, meditate, all of that. We might be talking to a busy parent, yeah. male or female, and they're rushing home going, I've got sports to get to. I've got this to do. So it, that may not be it. But find something. If it is breathing for five minutes, doing a breathing exercise, then make time for you. You are important. Make time for you. It also will kind of seal that experience you've had in networking as being okay. You don't kind of go into the world feeling depleted and having to go to the next piece uh, of business that might deplete you again even further or, or, or take your energy in another way. Um, it, it, it allows it to settle and allows it to go, okay, that was, yeah, that was good or that wasn't, wasn't probably my cup of tea, but that's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I love these um, permissions that you're giving us because it's strategy wrapped in permission and not everybody works the same way. So the, everything that you're saying is so wonderful for the audience. And they're used to hearing this stuff from me, like you have to make it your own. So I really appreciate all of this. What do you think is your top tip for somebody growing their network? My top tip for growing their network is, um, oh, there's so many. <laughs> identify what you want to achieve and when you've identified what you want to achieve if that is to be surrounded by peers for peer-to-peer -peer support if that is to grow your client base if that is to um learn and grow to be educated through you know uh, with business leaders uh identify what that is and you might be all three then find your network that answers one of those or more. You won't find those answers in all of them. It's just, you'll never get clients in a business leader's um, educational platform. Well, you might, but it wouldn't be the, it won't be the ultimate uh, where you're going to go to. Um, if you're going for peer, peer to peer support, again, you may find clients, clients are everywhere. Um, and I challenge people who actually go networking for clients because in my view, if we're all selling in the room, nobody's buying. So you really have to go to, to learn from others, to educate others, to share your work, to share your value, and to be curious, to make relationships, to develop those relationships and create a cohort of, of people around you. So get out there, network, and join, if you have the capacity, join at least three networks. Mm, nice. Tell me when you know when a group isn't right for you oh you'll know straight away you, you will have you will have um you'll feel devalued you will feel that you're threatened you and i don't mean physically or, or verbally but you'll just feel 
I have to prove myself too much. I have to, I have to, um, I feel that I'm in competition with others. So, I mean, you know, the networking hub, you are a member and you, there's other people who do what you do. There are other marketeers who do what they do. There's different people in the audience, but there's so much worth in that because we all learn, we're all placed in different um, parts of the world. We have different clients. We have different we want to work with maybe different clients. So there's opportunities to cross pollinate or collaborate. Um, the opportunities are there. So look for networks um, that you feel comfortable in, that you know it's your tribe, that you know that you enjoy actually being in their company and that you learn something and, and you're happy. I mean, gosh, it's quite it's simple as that. Really no. that you are going to get something from it. One of the first times I ever did networking, and so I was a teacher forever. We don't, I didn't need to network, right? Yeah. But when I became in, when I came into the entrepreneurial space in 2013, 13, 14, I jumped into some networking groups and they felt very transactional, like people yeah. kind of walking toward you with their card out. And it didn't feel, and I didn't have these words then transactional versus relational. I didn't have those words until like seven years later. And it would have been so helpful for me to understand like why that felt so gross to me and what yeah. to do about it. And so th I think that you are, I know that you're an expert in this and that you facilitate networking so beautifully. And I'll talk about that in a moment, but uh, I think that your the job that you do of educating people about the best ways to network in a way that feels good for us is really useful for people because we don't always know why we don't like something or why it's yeah. not working for us. And, and yet on the other side, Jen, I will say there are people who prefer transactional. That's how they, they work. Yeah. That's how they, how they operate. And they're neither is right or wrong. Yes. Um, but it wouldn't be the space I would um, operate in transactional. Yeah. It's, it's about relationships and, and, um feeling that you are building something uh it's more than a contact in your rolodex or in your black book whatever you want to call it it is about building a trusted bond with somebody that you can share and 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 lean on you can also support yeah. It's it's really everything. And then without making it sound like a full on relationship, it is, you know, but that's it. I have made so many friends through my networking and there and I you mentioned it. I keep in touch with so many people uh, that I've, I've met when I lived in the States and when I lived in England and traveled the world with my with the work I did. Um, and I've kept them because they were relations in business. But they've become more than that. And still I can reach out and, and ask for help and they can do the same. That's good networking. Yeah. You know, I joined the networking hub, which is Siobhan's um, group that she runs her networking group because it's global. And um, I really wanted to meet more people from across the world. And I wanted to learn more about you know, especially European culture, it's so different than American culture. And I really wanted to learn more about that and connect with people. So that's why I joined. And I have to say the work that you do to connect people, even in, um, even in our meetings is really seamless and thoughtful and, and, and strategized. And so can you talk a little bit about how the networking hub can help entrepreneurs all over the world with their networking? Thank you, Jen. And um, we're so honored to have you with us. And um, yes, I can. One of the things I've networked forever, even when I was in employment. And when I started to, I also became a coach. I was a career transition coach. So I'm giving a little background. The, the coaching has helped me become a coach, facilitator, mentor. And that's what I've done now and niching into the networking space. Because once I well, went self-employed or into entrepreneurship, I realized that people, it, it's like they lost the art of networking. They lost the ability to communicate. Um, and when then more recently with COVID, I realized, gosh, uh, we don't have to move anywhere. We can sit where we are and do business anywhere. That is if our business is, is looking to go global. But we can't just do it like that. We have to understand who we're speaking to. And I've worked in the States. I know that there's nuances that um, American companies like or, or do that are different to the Europeans. And I won't 
lump all the Europeans in together because we've had this conversation in our rooms and our meetings where people from the Netherlands will say they, they operate very differently to the Germans or the English or the Irish um, and so on. And, and we have clients in the Middle East as well. So it's if we want to do business in those countries, how amazing is it to learn from others that are able to tell you this, this is our language and this is how they like to hear something or this is how they like it presented to them or um, they, they, they're they not a, a quick fix, they're a manana, they take their time over something. So if your expectations are, are enlightened as to why your client may not be calling you back from Spain and you're operating in America, you're thinking, oh, now I know. And this is how I follow up because I've been advised by somebody who knows that market really well. Um, it's also, um, we're growing and how amazing is it to grow with learning from others um, in their on, on their entrepreneurial journey and, and from their experiences. And I myself would rather help somebody not learn the lessons I've had to learn, but maybe they can learn another one and teach me yeah. <laughs> that lesson. So that's what it's about. We don't have um, access to all the departments we would have done in big businesses or to those. We may have mentors, but not for every everyday situation. So how fantastic to have your finger on the pulse of people you can call upon because when you say in our network oh you know we're members of the network of oh great yeah how can i help mm -hmm. it's like this door is Im immediately opened and right. um yeah there's something quite uh what's the word i'm looking for familiar and uh, you know comforting i was gonna say yeah. accessible too yes there's a good word yeah Tell <laughs> you us are how the lady of words <laughs> Uh, tell people how they can try the networking hub before they even decide to join because that's what oh. I did yeah so for anybody who's never been to the networking hub we invite you as our guest to come and try it out because we always feel that it's good to get uh, an example of how we roll and we may not be right for everybody but we want to give you a chance so the networking hub.ie is our web website and um, and I if you Go to any of our uh, global B2B events. So these are the ones that are open to visitors and members alike. They can use the code VIP pass, all one word, lowercase in the discount code before they purchase. Nice. And they won't pay a penny. Wonderful. So, yeah. I highly recommend giving it a try because it's online. You know, it, it really is uh, great for extroverts and introverts. It, it gives yeah. you access to people you would literally never be able to meet in the real world uh, unless that you were all in this room together. And the way that Siobhan facilitates uh, and puts people into breakout rooms and, and it's very intentional. It's not willy nilly and it's not uncomfortable. It's the always curate. facilitated. And yeah. I think that that can be unnerving for people like, oh, I'm going to get into a room and what are we supposed to talk about? But it's always facilitated. And so I highly recommend people checking out the networking hub and I will put the links in the show notes so that people can access that. Thank you, Jen. Anything, Thank you. any other gems you want to leave us with before we oh, wrap up? I, listen, there's another session on the gems that I could <laughs> add. Uh, remember the bank, the networking bank, keep depositing, yeah. um, show up, follow up. Follow yeah. up, follow up, follow up. If you meet anybody in the networking uh, environment and you've taken their business card or you've taken their details, connect with them on LinkedIn and follow up. If it's not to have a, a deeper one-to-one -one meeting, follow up and, and thank them for their time. I love that's that. That's really, that's another personal brand little um, nugget for you. Yeah, so the, the content really, and the content and the marketing really converge when it comes to networking, because if you don't have any of that foundational stuff in place about your personal brand, your message, your content, or there's no place for people to go after they meet you, then you're kind of missing out. Yes, absolutely. So you're, I mean, you work with people and I know you and Claudia also do work with, um, with clients where they identify, this is where they sharpen their message. And working with somebody to identify your ideal client or get you clear on that message, will help you get your message across and you won't have people glazing over when you when you tell them what you do you want to be you want your message to be sharp that that helps in networking it does and plus and just one last thing is 
we can't help you in your networking if we don't know who you're looking for. So I would be, exactly. I'd be thrilled. Like you've talked about this entire conversation. You're thrilled to help put people with the other right people that they need. But if you don't know who you're looking for, or who I can yeah. refer to you, it's kind of a waste of time. So doing that Absolutely. is super important. I love that point. Thank you for bringing that up. Not All right, Siobhan, I won't take up any more of your time, but I want to thank you um, so much for your expertise. And I always love chatting with you. Thank you again. Thank you too. Thank you, Jen. Appreciate it. Great chat. Okay. Bye everyone. Bye.